Hey there, crafty friends. My name's Misty. Welcome to Glee Spin Designs. First, I want to say I have missed you all so very much. And second, in today's video, we are making some high-end home decor. So let's get crafting. Let's start off with a quick and easy DIY. Recently at Dollar Tree, I found what I'm going to call weaving baskets. However, on the tag, it does say weaving straw plate three assorted. You do have to buy them individually. And I do believe they have other styles as well. They kind of remind me of the seagrass baskets, which are always really nice. For my little baskets, I wanted to add a little bit of extra style and some extra cuteness, so I removed the tag and then I'm going to add some leather strap handles by using the Dollar Tree faux leather. Now I think for $1.25, the faux leather from Dollar Tree is a really nice deal. They have several different colors, black, white, brown, and navy blue. For this basket, I'm going to use the black and I'm just taking the one end and folding it over to the thickness that I would like the leather strap to be. And I make sure that I crease it really, really well so that I can take my hot glue gun, add some hot glue, really nice amount into that crease, and then you're going to smooth it out so that hot glue really flattens out and you don't have a bunch of lumps like you can get with using the leather. If the leather's not glued completely and you have some open on the edge, I just took my hot glue gun, added some more hot glue close to the end, and then again pressed it down, flattening out so it's nice and smooth. If you're worried about burning yourself with the hot glue, use one of the Dollar Tree silicone makeup brushes to smash it down. They work perfectly. Next, I wanted to cut out that strip, so I just took my scissors and simply cut as straight as I possibly could. The dimensions for the Dollar Tree faux leather is 12 by 20 inches, so therefore there's a shorter end and a longer end. If you use the shorter end to make your leather strap, once you cut it out, you can fold it in half, cut it in half, and you have the perfect size leather strap handles. The reason why I folded the leather over in the first place is because I wanted you to be able to see the black leather on both sides of the straps. To attach my leather strap handles, I will be using a combination of these jot push pins, which kind of have a half bead on the end of them, as well as a little bit of hot glue for some immediate and strong hold. I like the leather straps two different ways, one where the leather straps are facing outward and then one where they're facing upward, which for this DIY, I chose the upward style, but you can of course choose however you would like. When adding the push pins, make sure you don't push it in between the material and you actually push it right into the center of the woven material on the basket. I then added some hot glue just to make sure that it held really nice and secure. I told you guys this was going to be a quick and easy DIY, or maybe I just said easy, but it is definitely quick as well. Now I'm just going to take the leather strap and place it back how I would like my handle to be, add some hot glue, which I did first this time, and then adding the push pin to give it a really nice high-end look. Once you have the first side done, of course you're going to move on to the next side, which I just took the leather strap, placed it where I would like it and how I would like it to be. Then I add some hot glue to keep it in place while I added the push pins. I am absolutely obsessed with how you can do it such a little touch to something and make it look so much more expensive and so much more high end. Like I had said previously, I added the leather strap handles to all three of my baskets, but for the gray one here, I love the color of this by the way, I did do something a little bit different and I also used the white Dollar Tree vinyl instead of the black. Now I'm not going to make you guys watch me make the leather strap because it is repetitive, so you're going to make the white leather strap just like I did with the black vinyl and then again cut it in half so you have two pieces that are the same size. Now using the jot push pins, I decided I did not want them to be this gold color, so I took my black chalk paint and I went ahead and painted four of those jot push pins with the black chalk paint. Now I add my leather straps just like I did with the black one, placing them where I would like them, gluing them down, and then adding the push pins. Out of all three of the baskets that I made, I definitely think this one is my favorite. I love the gray, white, and black combination. For the little dark tan basket, I used the brown faux leather and then I used the black push pins that I had painted. I love how all three of them turned out and I would love to know which one is your favorite down in the comments. Not only do I love the look and the style of these baskets, but I also love the fact that I can style them and use them as home decor in so many different ways.
for this next DIY, I'm using one of the notorious lovely Hurricane vases from Dollar Tree, and I'm also going to use some of the Rust-Oleum Frosted Glass Spray Paint. Now, of course, you can use as many coats as you would like. I only used two coats of the spray paint on my Hurricane vase, and here's how it turned out. The more coats you add of the spray paint, the less transparent your Hurricane vase is going to be. So most of you know that I am an above knee right leg amputee and let me just say when I found these flexible stencils at Dollar Tree, I literally could have done a one leg cartwheel right there in the aisle. I mean seriously, how gorgeous are these? This one right here stole my heart right away. So I did do this one other time and I tried taping the stencil right onto the vase. However, once I pulled the tape up, it did want to pull the spray paint up. So if you don't spray paint your vase, you can tape the stencil down. But here is how I decided to put the stencil on so that I did not have to actually put the tape onto the vase. So I just took a piece of cling wrap or saran wrap and I just cut off a square big enough to where I can stretch it around and tape it onto one side of the stencil, stretch it around to the vase, and tape it onto the other side so therefore it's really pulling that stencil down onto the vase so that it's on there nice and tight and we also don't have to mess the vase up when we pull off the tape i also put a little piece up here at the top just so that i wouldn't get anything on that area as well next i will be using the alex flex flexible spackle it is very inexpensive there's never any cracks i really love it you can use the dollar tree lightweight spackle as well but with either one of them, I would add some paint, whichever color you would like. I am choosing the white bear chalk paint. And you just want to add a little bit to the spackle and mix it really well. Okay, so I know this is weird, but you want your spackle to almost look like sour cream. <laughs> I know, right? Weird choice. But that's just what it reminded me of. You want it to be spreadable. See how I'm taking a nice flat brush? I put some of the spackle and paint mixture onto it. And then I'm going to pretty much spread it and drag it across the stencil so that the spackle paint mixture fills in the stencil pretty much on its own and you have a really nice flat smooth look but again it will be popping out at you once you remove the stencil and look at this you guys look how gorgeous I was blown away. I decided to only just do the bottom of this vase with the stencil, but you could use the other side of the stencil to do the top. That would also be really pretty as well. I wasn't quite done with the vase just yet. I found this little trinket jar at Dollar Tree. It did originally have a lid, but I lost it somewhere in that mess of a craft room, but I really didn't need it anyways. So I decided I was going to take some of that spackling and paint mixture. I did add a little bit more spackling just so that it had a little bit more texture. And then I'm going to literally paint the entire glass trinket thing, whatever you want to call it. I did the outside and the inside because I was originally just going to do the outside because I'm going to be putting it at the bottom of my vase. But I'm like, I can use the other side, flip it around and use it as a little trinket jar. I don't know about you guys, but I love a two for one. And here's how this DIY turned out. This DIY is definitely one of my favorites. I absolutely love the final look. Now this home sign is not from Dollar Tree, it is from Family Dollar. It was $3, but they do have smaller ones at Dollar Tree and they also have different words as well. Now for this DIY, I do want texture, but not as much texture as if I were using the spackling. So I'm using my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and then adding a little bit of baking soda to it to give it some of that texture and make it a little bit thicker. If you want more texture, you can add more baking soda, or you could always add the spackling to it as well. 
Once I had my paint and baking soda mixed up really well, I'm going to take the homeward and I'm going to paint the entire thing. Now I know we're going to be covering up pretty much the bottom half, but just in case anything is kind of see-through or you can see behind it, you want everything to be really nice and cohesive so therefore you don't have white on top and then you can kind of see through the bottom and see that plain wood. So you want to make sure that you paint the entire home word. Once it is completely painted and completely dry, look at that texture. I don't know about you guys, but I am a texture person to the T and I just love this DIY. Now, as if that wasn't enough texture, we are going to be adding a whole bunch of texture with some Dollar Tree moss. I do want to mention that this is the Dollar Tree floral moss, not the Spanish moss or reindeer moss. Oh goodness, y'all, I'm already not looking forward to how many times I'm going to have to say moss in this DIY. So what you're going to do is take the moss and you're going to put it between your hands and start rubbing them together so that it really breaks that moss down into a really fine, gosh, I'm trying to think of something other than the word moss. Don't worry about getting any of the green on your hands. It does wipe right off or you could also use gloves if you would like. Now I'm taking the word home and some painter's tape and I'm going to place the painter's tape not quite center but a little bit above the center. You can add your painter's tape higher or lower if you would like. This is just where I personally liked mine. And like I had previously mentioned, we are going to be covering that bottom half. So keep that in mind. Now that my painter's tape is where I would like it to be, I make sure that my floral moss is right beside me, ready to go. And then I'm going to take a small brush and some Mod Podge. I do a small section at first, placing the Mod Podge on the letter H right underneath the painter's tape. And again, I do a small section because I was not sure how this was actually going to turn out and, or if I even was going to like it. But once I had seen that it was working very well and I could really kind of envision the final product, I was super excited and I was able to kind of start doing bigger sections with the Mod Podge and then adding the moss on top. I did notice that when adding the Mod Podge, you want to do a nice thick amount. You don't want to really smooth it out and like as if you were decoupaging, you want to have a nice good bit on there. You don't want it dripping down the sides, but you want to be able to kind of smash that moss down into the glue so that it really sticks. Once I had the bottom completely covered, I did decide that I wanted to add a second coat to really fill that completely in. So I took a chippy brush and dipped it into the Mod Podge and started pouncing it all over the moss that is already on the word. And then I just add some more moss on top of that so that we have a nice second coat. Then once my second coat is completely done, I take the word and kind of shake off the excess, make sure I don't have any missing spots. And you want to take your finger or a paintbrush and make sure you get down in those grooves between each letter. And you guys watch this. I was so amazed how crisp that line is. Oh, I love this DIY so much. Sorry, you guys. I, you know I get excited about my projects. Come on now. Look how cute. Okay, back to the project. To prevent any shedding, you could use any type of clear coat. I used this Bare Chalk Clear Matte Spray Paint. For this next DIY, I bought two books from Dollar Tree. However, what you want to do is make sure that when you remove the cover, it has a hard white cover to it. So as you can see, once I remove this cover, the entire book is white. If you would like a different color, that is completely fine. But I just wanted to make sure that both of mine were completely white once I removed the covers. So I'm sure most of you guys know it. Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs, absolutely great person, wonderful crafter, and 
she uses these IOD products all of the time and I've really loved their molds when I see her use them. So I decided to click on her link under her video and I bought some of the molds as well. And let me tell you guys, they did not disappoint. So Sammy, thank you so much. I was going to use air dry clay, but then I decided to go ahead and use some resin. So I bought this resin off of Amazon. I will have the link down below in the description box. I also bought the resin kit, the resin mix mixing kit that comes with this, these little cups and stirring things and all kinds of stuff that you would need. So I mix a one to one ratio of A and B, and then I take my little mixer, my resin mixer that I also got off of Amazon. I will also have that link down below for you guys. And I mix it for a long time, even though I fast forwarded it for you guys. And then you're just going to take the resin and pour it right into your molds. You guys, this was my very, very first time doing this and it was so easy. I might have overfilled my mold just a little bit, so therefore it wasn't completely flat on the back, but again, it was super easy and actually quite satisfying to make. If you have any air bubbles, from what I was told, using a heat gun or a hair blow dryer and just blowing at the mold real quickly will help those bubbles completely disappear. I let my molds dry overnight and you guys look how perfect these came out and this was so satisfying to get them out of the mold. I could do this all day long. I mean, I think these turned out perfect and I love that there's a little bit of flexibility to them and look how gorgeous the detail is. I definitely know I will be buying more of these IOD molds, that's for sure. Next, I'm going to take my book stack and I'm just going to grab the pieces from the mold. I have no idea what they're called, you guys. Like I said, I'm so new to this whole mold thing. But anyways, I'm going to add the piece to the spine of the book by adding it using some hot glue. And the glue sticks that I'm using and personally love to use is the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. I will have those linked down below in the description box and a kind of a set where it comes with the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and the Gorilla Glue glue gun. Holy moly, that is crazy. Anyways, the links for the glue sticks and the glue gun will be down in the description box down below if you guys would like to check them out. I then took the second sign of the mold and glued it onto the spine of the book just like I did with the previous one. The reason why I chose the white for my books is because I'm going to take the books outside and spray paint just the spine with this linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I am so obsessed with how they turned out. I am personally totally digging the all white really clean look but you are more than welcome to de-stress these if you would like. For this DIY, I found three of these ceramic candlestick holders at Dollar Tree. They do have other styles as well, but I did really like the ridges on these ones. I felt that they all kind of went together, or at least could go together. So I decided I wanted to stack all three of them up to make one long piece. And stacking and gluing these together is super easy because there's only one end of the candlestick holders that will fit together perfectly. And you're going to basically want to glue them bottom to top, bottom to top. For the pink one, I decided I was only gonna remove the sticker on that one because where the sticker is, the divot is not very deep. And on the other two candlestick holders where the sticker is, it has a really deep divot to it in the center. So really the glue only needs to be put on the outer edge of those ones because those are the spots where the two candlestick holders are actually going to be glued together. The middles are not even going to touch at all. I glued my candlestick holders together using a combination of E6000 and hot glue for immediate hold. I do recommend using E6000 because this project is going to be quite heavy once we are done. Not like crazy heavy or anything, just a little too heavy to be using only hot glue. Here's what the three candlestick holders look like now that they are all three glued together. 
Now we can bring out the base, which is another notorious Dollar Tree base. I feel like, again, this is another base they have all of the time, so it should not be very hard to find. At this point in the project, I was not quite sure which end I was going to be gluing the vase to, but I did end up deciding I really liked the fit to the white side because it was absolutely perfect. Again, to glue the vase, I used the combination of E6000 and hot glue, just like I did with the candlestick holders. I was so excited to actually glue my vase down, I forgot to remove the sticker on the bottom. Now, I'm glad that it is white, and you won't necessarily be seeing down into the bottom of the vase, but I recommend removing the sticker. To get my three candlestick holders in vase to all look like it is one piece and not all glued together, I am again going to use some of the Alex Flex Flexible Spackling. I took my finger and only added the spackling where I glued each one of the candlestick holders together and as well where I glued the vase on top of the candlestick holders. Again, doing this is going to make it look like they are not glued together and it is all one piece. Here you can see the spots where I filled in the cracks with just the spackling where I glued each one of the candlestick holders together and the vase on top. Right up here at the top, you can see where I put the spackling in between the vase and the candlestick holder. Well, I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape and place it right above the spackling and go around as straight as I possibly can, as close again to the spackling as you can get it. Because of the curve of the vase, my tape wanted to fold over, which actually ended up working out in my favor. Now to cover the rest of the vase, you could do that however you would like, but I'm just going to use a plastic grocery bag and I did end up deciding to just cut the handles off because I felt like those would just get in the way more and you would have to kind of figure out how to tape them down. So I just decided to cut those off and then I'm going to place it up at the top above and over the base. And because that tape folded over because of the curvage when I was putting it onto the base, I was actually able to take the bag and just stick it right to the tape and then wrap the excess around and tape it down. Before I start adding our texture, I wanted to get the base all one solid color just so that, again, it was all going to be cohesive. I was worried that any color would show through and also did not have to want to do a million coats just to get it all to look the same. And with that dark blue, I was kind of worried that it was going to peek through. So I used the Valspar Perfect Gray spray paint. And honestly, I really don't think it matters what color you choose and you could probably try and do it without having to spray paint it, but you still want to put the bag over the top for this next step. And for the next step, I'll be using some of the spackling and paint mixture. However, again, I will be adding some baking soda to it as well to give it just a little bit more texture and also it does help with coverage a lot. And the amount of baking soda you add to it for texture is up to you. However, just keep in mind that you want to be able to actually add it to the vase, so don't make it too thick. I mean, you definitely can make it a lot thicker than I have here, and you can use the hand technique where you just put it in your hand and start placing it all over your project, but you do want to make sure that is more of a paste consistency. I decided to go with the paintbrush technique and I just used a chippy brush and started painting this mixture all over the vase going from the bottom all the way up to where we have the tape and the bag on our vase. Once I had the first coat on and I let it dry, I did a second coat and here is how it should look once it is all completely dry. I think this is turning out absolutely gorgeous. I love that it all looks like one piece now and I'm so digging that texture. Because of the way that I had to glue the candlestick holders together so that they would fit together properly and because I used the white end to glue my vase to, the bottom of our project and the bottom of the pink candlestick holder is very small. So I wanted to add one of these Dollar Tree vase charms and all I did was add some E6000 hot glue. I glued it to the bottom of the pink candlestick holder, which is the bottom of our project. And then I added some of the paint spackling and baking soda so that it all went together. And look at that, you guys. You cannot even tell that this piece was so many different pieces glued together. I'm so loving that. Now that I had everything covered, before I let it dry, I'm going to remove the bag 
and the painter's tape. Now I started to remove the painter's tape and I was like, wait, I have got to turn this so that the camera can see it so you guys could see how perfect and satisfying this tape removal was. The line is so straight and crisp. It is just absolutely perfect. And this right here is exactly why I used the painter's tape and why I use painter's tape so often. In this video, I will be showing you several ways to use this DIY and a gorgeous vase is one of them. And here's a look at how it turned out. next DIY I'm going to be using these three metal candlestick holders from Dollar Tree they are three different sizes and I decided instead of to keep them black I wanted to spray paint them with the rust-oleum linen white chalk paint so the tops of the candlestick holders have a few spots where the paint is missing because I was not recording and accidentally glued the tops before I hit record so I apologize but we will be just completely covering that with these beautiful glass pieces that I found at Dollar Tree. I love the color of these but one thing I do love even more is this beautiful textured look. They are so pretty. I want to make these beautiful glass pieces into these really pretty almost like lanterns so I'm going to take each one of the candlestick holders and glue it to the bottom of the glass piece. I find it doing it that way it just makes it so that you can see the bottom of the glass piece better and you will get it a little bit more right in the center and again you're going to do this to all three of the glass pieces. For the tops of these lanterns, I'm going to be using these LED hanging lamps from Dollar Tree. They have these LED lights inside of this plastic bulb. They do have these metal hangers up here at the top. They're a little difficult to get out, but if you use your scissors and just turn your scissors, it will kind of pop that metal piece right out and you can remove it. Then I removed each one of the bulbs. They are plastic. You can just unscrew them and I wrapped the fairy lights around my finger so that I can push them up inside where the light bulb was. And then I will be adding a little piece of painter's tape and this is going to protect the lights from any kind of paint. You will repeat this step again with all three of the hanging lamps. Now when I originally made these, I was not going to actually add any texture, so I spray painted the tops with the Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. However, I did decide to add the texture, so I went ahead and used the spackling paint and baking soda mixture that we used on our vase. I'm not going to make you guys watch all of this, but once I had the texture on the top, I did also paint the underneath of it as well. And then all you have to do once it is all completely dry is remove the painter's tape and pull out that light so that it is hanging out. Then once everything is completely dry, you can just place these tops right onto those glass pieces so that the fairy lights are hanging down inside and here's how it turned out. Okay, as you can see, I changed my mind. I decided to only do the texture on one of the LED lamps. Then I grabbed another one out of my stash, spray painted it with the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, just like I did with the other two. And then I just pulled the fairy lights back down from where I pushed them up in the hole and placed them right on top of the glass pieces. And they are so stinking cute. Thank you. 
Now, don't think I made you watch me put the texture on the other LED lamp for no reason. What I decided to do with that is actually put it on top of the tall vase and it looks like a stunning lamp post or a really tall lantern. I think it just turns out so pretty and it actually gives off great lighting as well. Another option for the LED lamp piece with the fairy lights and the texture is to put it on top of the other Dollar Tree base that we used the stencil on and here is how that looks and oh my, it is so beautiful. DIY, I'll be using one of the clear garden dishes from Dollar Tree along with one of their macrame, macrame, misty, you've done lost your mind. No, it is a terracotta pot and this did come in a two pack since it is the larger size. You will want to remove the stickers from the garden dish, especially because this circle here is completely center. So it is going to help us get our terracotta pot on there completely center. So I'm going to use, again, some E6000 and a combination of hot glue. And then where the hole is on the terracotta pot, I'm going to line that little circle that is on the dish with that hole and it is completely centered. Now originally I was going to go for a different textured look for this project, but I decided actually to go against that a little bit later on. But I did start out with spray painting it with this bare chalk linen white spray paint. And then on top of that, I spray painted the Krylon Natural Stone Granite Spray Paint. Now don't get me wrong, I do think this is beautiful, so don't hate me for covering it up but I did want this project to match a little bit more with the rest of the projects in the video. I have been decorating my home with them. This actually is in my kitchen right now. This video I've been working on for quite a while. So now I actually have it in my kitchen and it has been in there for a good month or so. And I really have loved decorating my home with a lot of the projects that I have made. So if you guys like that granite look, I wanted to show you the paints that I used for that. But if you would like to go for the textured look, I did just go ahead and add some of the spackling, the paint, and the baking soda mixture all over the entire piece. Now all I did was set it aside to dry and before I show you the final look, I wanted to show you guys an option that you can use for bowl filler. Yes, I am talking cat toys. These are perfect. People pay a crazy amount for bowl filler that looks just like these. Well, yes, there's bells in them, but easily pull the bamboo apart and the bell will fall out. Cut off the tag, spray paint them whatever color you would like, you could add a bunch to a bowl or add them to other bowl filler and they are gorgeous. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you've seen all of the DIYs in today's video, let me know which one was your favorite. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!